while I was coming into the city, mm. I thought, wow, there must be a lot of other jazz bass players here. So, <laughs> they so uh, are. <laughs> You're not lying about that. <laughs> so what advice do you have for young musicians like us who want to move to New York, but maybe don't know how to go about being a professional musician here? Man, it's hard here. There's a lot of competition here and there's very few jobs. And that's a reality of being here. But this is a place that also has a great deal of human energy. And uh, I think when I, when I meet with tr trumpet players that I went to Juilliard with, it was like 11 or 12 of us. And out of the 11 or 12 of us, three work. So we always kind of joke around and stuff. We say, nah, we have kids like kind of the same age, you know, we two, so we say, the ones who didn't play, do you regret playing? Or do you regret studying music? And they always say, no. One worked in the publishing industry. No, I, didn't, I don't regret it. When I learned playing music, I applied to everything that I did. So I think it's hard to make it in New York. And I think if you're really, really dedicated and you want to make it playing professionally, you want to come here, you have to come in. You have to bring the energy and the vibe here. Because when you have a lot of people around, not a lot of work, you get all of the kind of negativity and stuff that you get when there's no work. And if you don't come ready for that, if you think, wow, New York, you know, the big buildings and all, you will struggle. But if you have a mature attitude and you get as much as you can get out of this city and the people who are here, it's, a, it's one of the greatest experiences in the world. You know, but you, you, know, you have to make decisions about what you want to do based on things that most suit your personality. One thing that happens is you might look at somebody who you admire, you respect them, or it might be someone in your family or someone who's not you at all, and you want to follow in their footsteps, but it might not be the right footsteps for you. So one of the hardest decisions for our older kids is figure out what you actually, what it is that you actually like to do. Now, you're not going to know what you would like to do. That's where you need the counsel of your parents, and you need to really, but when you, when you understand what you like, you can take counsel much more intelligently. What I find happens is that when you don't really have any idea and you haven't focused on what you want to do, anything your counsel tells you is always a no. And a lot of times your counsel is telling you something very intelligent. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have to make sure that you are ready to receive counsel. And the way that you become prepared to receive counsel is to be set on what you want and what you, what you have a sense of what you don't want. That way you don't have that automatic, I'm a kid, I don't care what you tell me, you're my parents, yeah. I'm hard-headed, I'm gonna do something <laughs> stupid just to show you I don't have to do what you told me we know you can do stupid things. <laughs> because yeah. we did stupid things. And because we did stupid things, we know you can do stupid things. Do you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's a long answer to your question, but finally, I would like to say, I also want you to, to consider and to understand that the movement needs people everywhere. It's not like 1943 or 42, when, when Bird and Miles, this is a different environment. The world is much closer together. Every local environment needs really brilliant, intelligent people who are dedicated to culture to help develop the culture and the feeling in those areas, whatever they may be. So, yeah. good luck.